Hey guys, Spud here, as always. And today we're at Nellis Air Force Base to fly a short practice mission with our F-15E. But before I do so, I th figured we should talk about cockpit ergonomics, a topic that is kind of uh, in the background when it comes to DCS world fans and military aviation buffs in general, but is something that is incredibly important. The more ergonomic a cockpit is, and the more comfortable a pilot is sitting in that cockpit, the more effective he or she is going to be when it comes to actually flying their aircraft, which means that they're going to be more survivable over the battlefield and have a higher chance of completing their assigned mission or tasking. So we're going to be going over a tip and trick here that is going to allow you guys to make your home cockpit far more ergonomic. And that has to do with the default head position in the F-15E Strike Eagle or any other module. This tip and trick applies to any module across the board. Whether that's the A-10, the F-15E, the F-A-18, the P-51, or any others. So let's hop in the cockpit and get started. All right, guys, so we're here on a early summer morning before it gets to be a bazillion degrees out here at Nellis Air Force Base. And let's talk about my perfect default head position when I spawn into a DCS World module. Now, this part of the discussion is going to be kind of wrapped around more modern aircraft in DCS because of the actual reference points we'll talk about today. However, the actual keybinds that we talk about in the Lua files we talk about today apply across the board to any module, not just a modern aircraft. So for me personally, my favorite default head position when I spawn into an aircraft in DCS is that of the FA-18C Hornet from Eagle Dynamics. Now, the reference points that we have in the FA-18C that I love so much for the default head position are when I am spawning into the aircraft and I want to have my head in the right spot, I always spawn in with roughly, if I zoom in just a hair here, with roughly the bottom row of OSB buttons on the DDIs of the FA-18 right against the bottom edge of my screen. And then I have the top of the canopy bow right against the top edge of my screen. And that's kind of what I try to emulate when it comes to all the other aircraft in DCS. However, in the F-15E, if I hit free center track IR button, I look kind of awkwardly far down into the cockpit. And this is the my least favorite aspect of the F-15E. However, thankfully, it is fixable. And we're going to go over that in just a second here. This is an issue that also plagues the A-10A from the Flaming Cliff series, as well as the A-10C and A-10C2 uh, full fidelity versions of the Warthog. Um, now, you can also use this to adjust your default cockpit position to anywhere you want, uh, really, for any module. So what I like to do here is I like to make sure I have my head in a nice, comfortable, neutral position. We want to have our center cockpit view in the most comfortable position possible in our aircraft or home cockpit, I should probably say for this one. So I'm looking straight ahead. My head's in a nice, neutral, comfortable position. We're recentering our track IR. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my head up a little bit using my track IR to get to the perfect position that I want to be in. Like I said earlier, reference points are pretty much that we want to have the bottom OSB buttons on our MPDs here, right against the bottom edge of my screen and the top of the canopy bow right against the top of my screen. Now the keybind we need to use to actually save this view that we see right in front of us right here on your keyboard is going to be right alt and numpad zero. So we're going to press that, right alt, numpad zero, and you know it's saved when your view kind of jumps like that. Don't worry, your view that we had before is actually saved. It just kind of jumps around. I think maybe this was coded in to show you. Yep, it's saved, no problem. All right, so getting our head back to kind of a more neutral, happy position here, then we can recenter our track IR, and boom, we're right back to exactly where we wanted that head position to be, by default, when we spawn into our F-15. Really awesome stuff here. Now, to show you guys that it does save, if we go out to our F-2 view again that we started off the video with, then we hop back in, whoop, right back to where we wanted to be. Absolutely magical. 
absolutely a game changer when it comes to that very annoying bit of having to fiddle with your track IR, fiddle with, fiddle with the center position of your VR goggles, fiddle with your zoom a bit to get your head right in the perfect comfortable position. Now let's take a look at uh, the actual snap view fo Lua file that was saved into your saved games folder. Keep in mind, this file will not show up in your saved games folder until you close out of DCS world. So let's close this mission. Then when we go to our saved games folder, dcs.openbeta or DCS, whichever version you have, if we go to config, view, we now have a new Lua file, snapviews.lua. That is the file in which that actual view that we saved just now by hitting right alt and zero on the numpad is saved in this Lua file. If we fly again, give it a second to load up here. Hop into our F-15, and we're now spawned into our jet. Obviously, we're zoomed way too far out. However, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that our default head position hitting track IR center is right exactly where we saved it, right where we want it. Absolutely perfect. Awesome. No longer looking awkwardly down in the cockpit like this. However, it is kind of annoying and kind of a drag to have to zoom way in when we spawn into our F-15. So let's talk about how we can fix that aspect of our saved uh, new snap view file. So if we open up our snapviews.lua file using whatever Lua uh, editor that you prefer, we then want to find our snap views a, a F-15 ESE file. So this is the snap view for the A-10A, and it is in alphabetical order, so that's why the A-10A shows up first. And then so if we hit uh, Control F and we just type in F-15E that we already have saved up here, hit Find Next, that'll snap us right on down to snap views F-15E SE. Now the actual file that we want to find is going to be, or sorry, portion of the file I should say that we want to find is going to be the default head view. So we can see that this is snap view one, snap view two, snap view three. We're just gonna scroll on down until we find default view. So there we go, number 13, default view under F15 ESE. Now the view angle right here is the actual uh, number we want to play with. So keep in mind guys that this number here does not actually correspond to the FOV that we can see when we go to options system current field of view 103 degrees also it is not the same fov displayed when we hit control pause and we open up our graphical debugger here and we look at fov 102.8 these two fov numbers do not correspond to the FOV number that is displayed in our snapviews.lua file. This is kind of annoying, I guess. Um, I don't know if this is a different unit, like if this is in pixels or inches, and this one here is in degrees or some other unit of measurement for FOV. I don't know why it wouldn't be in degrees, but is what it is. So if we get rid of these guys here, um, now you kind of have to play a little bit of um, trial and error. So if we now exit out of this mission, we go back to our Lua editor here. Let's try putting in a value of 90. And let's see if that works. File, save, fly again. We'll load back into our cockpit. Da, da, da. Taking a while. There we go. Back into our F15E. All right, so that looks a little bit better, but unfortunately, we're still going to have to zoom in quite a bit. So as you guys can see, it's just at this point, it's a game of trial and error. Now for my screen and my setup here, my perfect number is actually going to be about 70. So if we put in a a uh, value of 70 on the FOV here. Again, I'm not sure what unit this is in, um, whether it's degrees, inches, pixels, whatever it is, I, I really don't know. Um, and we hit fly again.
boom, back into our F15. And wow, perfect right there. Just have to zoom in just a touch here, but that's absolutely perfect place to be. And now I'm ready to go. I can spawn into my F15, my head's in the right spot, no longer have to mess with that. And I can just get right to starting up my jet or right to flying if you're doing an in-air start. Pretty cool stuff here, guys. So in summary slash review, remember all you gotta do to save that view is hit right alt and zero on your numpad then close your DCS world mission, go to your saved games folder, go to config, view, snapviews.lua. Then with your Lua editor, you're going to need to find default view for the aircraft that you are wanting to edit. And number 13 is always gonna be that default view for your particular aircraft. And then now we just have to play the kind of guessing game as to which FOV setting we need so that way we don't have to mess with our zoom when we spawn into our aircraft. For me, with an ultra wide, with a 34 inch ultra wide, the perfect value to put in there is 70. However, your mileage will definitely vary there depending on your VR goggle uh, that you use, your uh, screen that you use, whatever it might be. So I really, really hope that this was helpful for you guys. I know it's definitely going to help out you A10A and A10C pilots out there, but it should apply to any of you guys for any aircraft that you want to have a better default view in. So uh, that is basically all I've got for you guys today. Again, I really hope this was helpful for you. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. If you guys want me to talk more about cockpit ergonomics, whether in a real cockpit or in your home cockpit, please let me know in the comments section down below. It's definitely a very interesting topic. So we'll see you in the next one, guys.